What's going on, bottom line viewers? It's Mitch here, live for another day of NFL free agency analysis. This time for Friday, March 18th, that is day five of NFL free agency 2022. And as always, as I've been breaking it down each and every day here on the channel, we are going to take your questions about your team signings. We are also going to break down every single move that happened today, every single signing, give you my thoughts, give you my analysis on each and every signing from today's action across the NFL. There were a few signings today. It's definitely dying down a little bit uh, compared to yesterday and the last few days. Most of the main players, most of the main big names are off the board, but there were a few big names that got signed today, including Austin Hooper, tight end, formerly of the Atlanta Falcons at Cleveland Browns, signs with the Tennessee Titans. We saw one of the premier punters, Johnny Hecker, sign with the Carolina Panthers. We saw Matt Ioannidis also sign with the Carolina Panthers. Logan Ryan signed with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Juju Smith-Schuster, the headliner, signed with the Kansas City Chiefs and more. So we're going to break that down. Before we do, though, make sure that you do Gronk Spike that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more BLV just like this. Let me know how you're doing. Definitely going to take more questions here tonight. If you guys have any questions about any signings or any teams specifically, there's definitely more room to do that as there aren't as many big name signings as I said. So if you guys would like to ask me any questions, then just pop in that live chat and let me know how you're feeling about your team. Almighty Trey Brown is in the chat. He says, what's the Pats got in the trade? Uh, they haven't traded for a few days. It was a couple days ago that they traded, but uh, they traded Shaq Mason for a fifth round pick. They traded Mac Wilson for Chase Winovich, and those are the two trades that the Patriots have done. Uh, we've got Chargers will beat the Bucks at Super Bowl 57. All right. Uh, Rick Bad Boy says, Sup, guys. What's going on, Rick Bad Boy? Ladarius says, yo, what's up, Ladarius? Cloudy says, Devontae, yes, I broke that down last night. If you guys haven't already checked that out, make sure that you do check that out. And that's why you guys should definitely Gronk Spike that notification bell, man. Make sure that all of the notifications are on so that you are notified when I'm live. You are notified when the latest upload hits. So that you know when I break down the Devontae Adams news or the Deshaun Watson news. Earlier today, I broke down Deshaun Watson. I did a whole 30-minute video on it. So if you guys want to go hear about that, definitely check that out. Um, Shanav says that Bronco is getting Tyron Matthew. I don't know. I, I don't think so, but I wouldn't rule it out, I guess. Monty says Patriots need to change their ways. I'm I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it to be honest with you. I'm on to on to competing in 2023 and 2024. It's it's already past me. I'm good. Uh Kyler says, "Do you think Derek Carr will have an MVP next year and do you see Gilmore heading to Vegas?" Good questions. Derek Carr, I don't think he'll win the MVP, but he wouldn't surprise me if he's in the conversation. And in terms of Gilmore, he's definitely from what I've heard, deciding between the Panthers and the Raiders. That's the latest of what I've heard. I do think the fit is definitely there. The familiarity with the coaching staff is definitely there. Them getting Devontae Adams is definitely enticing. I think Gilmore would be a huge add for them. I definitely think they need to look to add that number one corner, and I think Gilmore could give them that for sure. Busboy says, I wonder when Schefter is going to announce the Matthew to Pittsburgh news. A lot of Pittsburgh fans are wanting to see Tyron Matthew in the black and yellow. We will find out if that ends up happening. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen, but we'll see. Jason says, Julio Jones to the Niners. He asks, uh, maybe. I, I feel like there's more wide receiver needy teams out there, but potentially. Chris Davis asks car MVP, or he says car MVP, hell no. Um, I don't know, I could see it. I don't think it's too crazy, but the Raiders would have to win that division. 
dimes ass bucks moves they did make a move today that i really like we're gonna talk about that in a bit Wavy says, I wish Julio Jones to the Cardinals. Busboy said, made a TikTok right now on the Adams trade. Oh, make a TikTok. Nah, I don't know, man. I could just take whatever I did from YouTube. Ladarius says, let's just hope the fifth round pick for Pitts, uh, for the Patriots is a good player. I, I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I've given up with the Patriots, to be honest with you. I think they're going to suck. I've made that known, so I I don't know. I, I've given up on the season. I, I'm going to watch, no doubt. I'll cheer them on. I don't think they're going to be very good, but, you know, I don't. Fifth round pick, the odds of that player being good is pretty low. We'll see. All right, so let's start it off with this. Connor McLeod wants me to talk about his favorite player from Notre Dame. Equinamius St. Brown, I think I said his first name right, to the Chicago Bears. And I'm just going to say this, Connor. I don't think that he is a lock to be the wide receiver three, as you put it. But, hey, he's got some ability to crack the lineup. Although, I will say, if he would have stayed in Green Bay... I'm not sure if Rodgers just despises him at this point because of the NFC Championship, but maybe he would have been able to compete on that depth chart. But nonetheless, Chicago, maybe special teams value, wide receiver depth value. I believe he's pretty tall. But from what I've seen, I'm sorry, Connor. He might not even make the team. He's not very good. He's got the dropsies. He's not his brother. That's all I'll say about that. So I just wanted to give him a shout out for that. That happened a day or two ago, but Connor wants me to talk about Equinamia St. Brown, and I'm just not really into it. Uh, Ross says, I could see every team in the AFC West making the playoffs. I definitely could. I think if if you were to look at it, they might be favored to make it. And we got to get to T-Perfect, who super chatted. Thank you, T-Perfect. $5 from him. Says, how is Rodgers supposed to get to 1-5 in the NFC Championship game without Devontae Adams? Well, T-Perfect, he couldn't even get to the NFC Championship game with Devontae Adams last year. So the question to you is, can he get past the NFC Divisional round without Devontae Adams? Thank you for the $5. I don't think it's going to happen, though. I don't think they're getting to the NFC Championship. I will say, though, depending on the draft that they have and what they do with those first-round picks and such... They'll still be a competitor. I'm going to put it competitor. Difference between competitor and contender, right? Contender is like they're going to go to the Super Bowl or they've got a chance. I put the Packers in the competitor category where they're going to be in the playoffs. I just don't know if they're actually going to have a chance to go to the Super Bowl. Baker to the Colts. Baker to the Colts could happen for sure. For sure. I think that's the leader in the doghouse for Baker's rights, let's call it. And it appears that it will be a second or a third round pick for Baker Mayfield. So I think that's a good deal if they could pull that off. And I definitely think Baker Mayfield deserves to be a starting quarterback in the, in this NFL. And I do think he suits the Indianapolis Colts. And that's a look where one year, $18 million contract for Baker Mayfield is not a bad look whatsoever when you dish out Carson Wentz you could potentially get Baker Mayfield for less than you traded away Carson Wentz right so it would make it a win-win for the Indianapolis Colts if they were to get Baker Mayfield another name to watch out there is definitely and I've been saying it all offseason is Gardner Minshew reports suggest that the Panthers are interested in him So look out for those two guys. We had some news regarding the quarterback position today outside of Deshaun Watson. The dominoes are about to fall for the rest of the teams. I'm intrigued to see where Matt Ryan goes. If he gets traded or if he remains in Atlanta. Some Falcons fans believe that that relationship is scarred and that he may move on. So Matt Ryan could be in the mix as well. But Jameis Winston was re-signed today. You would call it a re-sign, although technically he's a free agent. 
re-signed with the New Orleans Saints. So he will likely be the starting quarterback for the Saints. The Saints also reported that Taysom Hill no longer a quarterback. So for whatever that means, I don't know if he's still going to remain the second or the third string quarterback, a plug and play player, but he is no longer in that starting conversation, if that makes sense. So Taysom Hill is going to take the role as probably a backup tight end, some sort of playmaker, special teams player. He's no longer considered a quarterback for the Saints, according to reports, but Jameis Winston re-signs. That's where I predicted eventually the Saints would go with their quarterback position. Was Jameis Winston? I never had Watson going to the Saints, although that was reported that it could very well happen. And it was looking like it might, and then it shifted to Atlanta, and then eventually RKO out of nowhere, we got the Browns. But the Saints, it makes sense to me because Jameis Winston was pretty good with the Saints last year. And with Jameis Winston, I believe the Saints probably would have made the playoffs. And the Saints weren't a very talented team last year. Very well coached football team, and I still think they'll be very well coached next year. Even without Sean Payton, they've got a strong defense. Their defense should remain intact entering the season. I thought at the end of the day last year, the Saints had the strongest defense in the NFL. This year... They might lose Teron Armstead. They likely will lose Teron Armstead at left tackle, so they'll have to find a replacement there. But Michael Thomas should be back in the lineup this year. I'm not sure what's going on with Elvin Kamara. But Jameis Winston remains the starter there. And coming off the injury, I hope for the best for him. And I definitely think if he plays the way that he played last year, he's got a chance the year after to get an extension from a team, whether that's the Saints or somebody else. And then also potentially take the Saints to the playoffs in a pretty weak NFC, especially an NFC South that features a pretty bad Panthers team with no quarterback and an Atlanta team that's not sure if Matt Ryan's going to stick around or not, but I have liked what Atlanta has done throughout free agency. Uh, Today, they re-signed Isaiah Olivers to their secondary, which I think was a good move and they brought in Casey Hayward to go with AJ Terrell. So their secondary is getting stronger for sure. Natasha, what's going on? Lego My Ego says, hit the like button. It's free. BLV works hard. Show some support. Thank you so much. T Perfect says, Kyler, you stopped them by having Derek Carr as their quarterback. What is he talking about? Oh, Kyler says, real question, guys. How do you stop Darren Waller, Devontae Adams, Hunter Renfro, and Josh Jacobs? And then Chris, or T Perfect responded by saying, you stopped them by having Derek Carr. So I don't agree. I like Derek Carr a lot. T Perfect says Russell Gage is the GOAT. Blessed Brian says Ravens still own the North. I'm not sure about that, bro. I'm not sure about that. I like the Ravens. Don't get me wrong. But Deshaun Watson, if he's Deshaun Watson, and I'm not sure about the suspension yet, I think that makes the Browns the favorite for that division, unfortunately, for you. Hugo says, hey, Mitch, what are your thoughts on the Panthers moves today? Okay, we'll talk about that. Johnny Hecker, Bradley Bozeman, Matt Ioannidis, DJ Moore extension. Seems like they're a low-key winner of the offseason. Hugo, that's a very good question. I, I don't remember if you are a Panthers fan or not, but this is a good place to go. I do really like what the Panthers have done this offseason. I thought last offseason was hit and miss, let's say. I thought they made some nice moves, especially on defense. But I thought on offense, you know, with the offensive line moves that they made last offseason, very, very questionable. This offseason, I'm not, I can't recall every single move that they've made, but specifically today, and I remember that they signed a couple offensive linemen, I feel like, that I like. I think they have done a great job because I like all the players they've signed, starting with Johnny Hecker, not the punter that he used to be. I know he's a punter, but... He's been arguably the best punter of the last five to eight years, I want to say, if I'm to guess. And he is a a pretty darn good football player. He's also good with the the trickery as well on special teams. So he gives them an ace up their sleeve on special teams. That's a nice move. Bradley Bozeman I like a lot. I think he's a good run blocker. Can open up that running game for the Panthers. 
hit and miss as a pass blocker, but definitely good age. I believe he's about 27, if I'm not mistaken. And last year had his best year ever moving to the center position. So as long as they keep him at center, that should be good for them. So I think that's definitely huge. And that's, I don't know if it's an upgrade over Paredes because he, he's a free agent. I don't know if that's an upgrade necessarily, but it's definitely younger, trending younger, and definitely a different style of player. He's also been healthier. A, a big thing with uh, Paradis has been his health. Matt Ioannidis, somebody that has missed some time throughout his career, huge fan of him. He's like almost BLV, all BLV team, all Mitch team. Uh, one year, he was like one of my favorite guys in the NFL. I, I feel like he was super underrated for a couple years there putting up massive sack and pressure numbers in Washington. Very good pass rusher. Not as great as a run defender, but I do really love how he complements that defensive line there with Brian Burns and what's the young kid's name? Forgetting the defensive tackle. Uh, Derek Brown. Derek Brown. So you got Derek Brown, you got my Matt Ioannidis. That's a really underrated interior duo there. So I really like that move as well, especially because he impacts the passing game, which I think they missed on last offseason by signing somebody like Daquan Jones, who was, uh, you know, whatever. Maybe Ioannidis takes over for what they thought Morgan Fox was going to be. DJ Moore extension, maybe a little bit pricey, definitely. I think a couple people were comparing his numbers to Chris Godwin. Chris Godwin's definitely a better player, in my opinion, and, and got maybe a a more team-friendly deal due to the fact that they have Tom Brady. But DJ Moore is definitely a staple of their team, foundation piece to their team moving forward, and a number one receiver in this league. I would say he's top 15 in the NFL. So you got to keep him around, in my opinion, and I think that's a good move. But yeah, overall, I really like what the Panthers have done for the most part this offseason. I'm just going to check their depth chart just so I remember exactly what they've done. Uh, Natasha, what's going on? Marcus says he celebrates three-month membership as a blv -er, LFG. Thank you so much, Marcus. If you guys don't know, you can become a member of the Bottom Line View on YouTube, and you can get your ranks up like Marcus did. Appreciate that, Marcus. Uh, thank you for being a blv -er. Sterling says, sup, Mitch. What's going on, Sterling? Leo says, Tom Brady is literally walking to the NFC Championship. I doubt... The Rams will be as healthy as they were last year. That's a fair point. Before I get to your super chat, whoever it was, I think it was Leo. Give me one sec. I just need to say, uh, Ross says John Clayton may have died. I did see that on Twitter that he passed away. I tweeted about it. That sucks. Uh, John Clayton, like a staple of the ESPN news team throughout my childhood. So... In some sort of way, he's influenced me. I couldn't say that he's been a, a major influence on, you know, why I'm doing this or whatever, but definitely in some way, shape, or form has informed this channel, just NFL news breaking, reporting, all that sort of stuff. So an absolute legend, rest in peace to him, and that it definitely sucks because another guy that throughout my childhood just a part of that ESPN just go to all the time used to listen to him so that really sucks um Leo says what grade would you give the bucks so far thank you for the two dollars keep the questions coming guys I appreciate it very good question so far uh for the bucks so Whitehead left Marpet kind of was unlucky right the only thing I really don't like about the Bucks offseason so far is that Marpet retired. That's the only thing I don't like because when you look at it, they re-signed Chris Godwin. It was a great team-friendly deal. I love what they're doing in terms of their restructures, making it more affordable this year, You know, moving the cap to add more players this year. I love the Shaq Mason trade. Thought that was one of the best moves of the offseason so far. We'll see what they do in terms of Gronk. I'm sure he'll be back. Leonard Fournette. I'm pretty sure he'll be back, although he tweeted today that he might be looking for some decent money on the open market as, and I'll say this, you know, a lot of people are going to get after guys that are asking outright to get, be paid, but definitely don't, man, especially running backs. Like uh, that is the one position I'll say, if a guy wants to get paid, let him get paid. Like if I'm a running back in the NFL, I don't know how long my career has been, even a career is going to be, especially a guy like Leonard Fournette. 
you got to get paid. You got to get that contract, man. So uh, whatever Leonard Fournette's got to do to get that money and get that bag, I mean, I'm I'm all for it. Do do your thing. Um, he already has a Super Bowl, so I can't really blame him. The safety position, they lost Whitehead, as I said, but they bring in Logan Ryan today. And the, really, what have they done so far? So they traded for Shaq Mason. They got Russell Gage. I like Russell Gage quite a bit. I thought that was a good contract. And then they bring in Logan Ryan. So let's talk about Logan Ryan. All right. So Logan Ryan, according to Josina Anderson, she spoke to him on the phone today. And Logan Ryan said that we've agreed to a one-year deal. I fly down there Tuesday to figure out the rest of the terms. I'm excited to be back with Tom Brady, he says. Ryan finds a team less than 24 hours after Giants release. I'm sure Tom Brady had something to do with this, whether it was, you know, giving a nudge towards Jason Light and Bruce Arians to get this guy on the football team, giving Logan Ryan a call, whatever it was. But I love Ro Logan Ryan. I'm a, I'm a big Logan Ryan fan. Uh, he played four years with the Patriots, won a Super Bowl with the Patriots. I mean, maybe won two, I think won two Super Bowls, 2014 and 2016. Was there from 2013 through 2016, I think. And then he left in 2017. Played three years with the Titans. Was a good player for the Titans. Actually had the last pass attempt by Tom Brady as a Patriot. He intercepted it for a touchdown. So that's a unique stat uh, for, for everybody to know out there. I'm sure some Patriots fans know that. But Logan Ryan pick sixed it in that wild card game. I, I'm a big Logan Ryan fan because he's an incredibly smart football player. He is a very good leader. Um, it kind of became a leader more so after leaving New England and then in Tennessee and in the Giants. He's really become a mature leader of, of football teams, I'm sure, from what he learned from New England and, and the experience there and winning and all that stuff. But yeah, he's very smart. He's an excellent tackler, um, very good zone coverage player which the Bucks tend to play more zone than they play man. He can play nickel. He can play safety. Uh, I'm sure he could play free or strong safety because of his physicality. He's not a big hitter like Whitehead, but he's a very secure tackler. That's something that I always noticed that stood out to me. When he was with New England as a perimeter corner, he actually played perimeter corner. So that just speaks to his versatility. But he used to play outside corner. Then he shifted to nickel. Then he shifted to free safety. So he's played all these different positions, kind of like Bucks fans, a Rondé Barber. Not as good, but you understand what I mean, right? So he has that skill set of being able to move around. And Logan Ryan, like, reads the quarterback well, has multiple seasons with multiple interceptions. That shows up on his stat sheet. I believe last year he had almost 120 tackles, so he's around the football. And yeah, he's just one of those clutch playmakers. He was a part of that 28-3 to game. Um... So, yeah, he's a good player. I like him a lot. I respect what he's become in the NFL because there's been a lot of guys that have left New England and have not exactly been the same player. I think you could argue Logan Ryan has gotten better. So that just speaks to how good he is because a lot of times you leave Belichick's system and then you kind of decline. But uh, Logan Ryan has arguably gotten a better since he left. So, interesting. Uh, but yeah, I think that's a great move for them because one of their biggest needs was, I was just checking Turtle threw me off. I thought that was an actual news report, OBJ to the Saints, but he's just making up rumors. Back to Logan Ryan though, he could play nickel if they want him to, and he can also play safety. So I'm sure you'll see him in both spots throughout the season in 2022 because Sean Murphy Bunting certainly struggled last year. So you could see him take snaps at nickel and you could also see him take snaps when they go three safeties. And I think that just allows them more versatility versus certain offenses having that type of player because Whitehead wasn't necessarily that type of player, right? Whitehead was rather a sub linebacker or a safety. He wasn't really a nickel player. He did at times, but that was more so like just for the run game and the blitzing stuff. Mike Edwards actually saw a lot of snaps at nickel. My thought is you probably won't see him play nickel this year. You'll probably see him just play free safety for a majority of the time. And you'll see Winfield play uh, strong safety. So 
that's that's kind of my thought. Um, I actually think Logan Ryan, in many ways, if he's the same player he was last year, could be an upgrade over Whitehead. And I like Whitehead, but I do think the Bucks need some coverage, and I definitely Logan Ryan gives that. So Tom Brady gets his buddy back in Tampa Bay. Another safety that signed today is George Odom with the 49ers. I thought this one was pretty interesting. He signed a three-year, $10.95 million deal. Um, He's definitely a fit for the system, obviously coming from Indianapolis, same defense with Eberflus, similar defense. I want to say same defense. They they probably are sim- more similar to Salah's defense as opposed to D'Amico Ryan's. But Odom's a pretty good athlete, pretty good size to him, played the most snaps he's ever played this season, performed pretty well, replacing... Was it Blackman, I believe? So he'll most likely, if they don't replace Jaqueski Tart, he's somebody that I I could see starting for the 49ers. But if they get Jaqueski Tart back, he would be a very good safety three. And that's kind of the way I look at him. He's like a, a borderline number two safety or a, a, a top number three safety. And zone coverage, good tackler and special teams value. He actually, I I believe, was an all-pro on special teams at one point. So a solid deal for the 49ers and a guy that can play on all four downs. I have not talked about Juju, but we'll talk about him right now. Juju Smith-Schuster signs with the Kansas City Chiefs as a one-year deal for Juju Smith-Schuster. And I believe it's $10.75 million. I believe I predicted this signing due to the Chiefs. It was one of the more predictable signings, I believe, of free agency as Chiefs have had some interest in Juju for the last year or so. They wanted to sign him last year, but Juju decided to take a one-year deal with Pittsburgh. Obviously, last year he had some injury issues that he couldn't overcome. And I think he's perfect for the Chiefs. I think he makes a ton of sense here. There's, There's some reasons why. So, Middle of the field player. He's a good slot receiver. I know that he gets a lot of crap because of his dancing and his shenanigans and stuff. And maybe there's reason to call him overrated because a lot of people saw him be super productive early in his career. First couple seasons where he was really going off, especially when AB was there. He was he was awesome for them, but then kind of started to decline a little bit and it just felt like he wasn't the same player. A lot of that had to do with that defenses started to focus on him, started to take him away, started to put coverage on him. Well, now there's no chance of any team being able to do that because Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey are the number one and the number two. So Juju's going to basically become Sammy Watkins for this team as that third option to throw the ball to, but it's not in the same way of Sammy Watkins, right? So Mecole Hardman's going to majority of the time line up on the outside and Tyreek majority of the time line up on the outside. Juju's really good in the slot. He's really good over the middle of the field. He's really good at breaking tackles. He's pretty good after the catch as well, at least was earlier in his career. Made of, might have declined slightly in that way, but he's tough and he can make contested catches over the middle and he's going to be a bigger target for this receiving core for sure. He's probably the biggest receiver they have outside of Josh Gordon, who I'm not even sure is going to make the team. Um, but yeah, Juju's a really nice number three in the NFL. So I think that's a really good signing for the chiefs. Another player that Mahomes can just go to when the other two guys aren't open or they're trying, a defense is trying to shift coverage towards Kelsey and take Kelsey away underneath. There's another guy that can complement Kelsey on those underneath and intermediate patterns. And then Tyreek and Hardman with their speed are threatening over the top. So I think that's exactly what the Chiefs needed. On top of that, he's a good blocker as well. So he's going to help, you know, in the running game and stuff like that. So Juju's a nice add for a team like Kansas City. I would have been more critical about a Juju signing if it was as like a number one or number two receiver. But as a good number three, I love Juju on, on just about any team. And I think shifting from Pittsburgh to Kansas City, he has a fresh start off the field, on the field from a fan perspective. Now, I will say the Jackson Mahomes TikToks with Juju are going to be the best collab since, you know, uh, the Avengers, but it's going to be phenomenal to watch on TikTok, I'm sure. It's going to be very, very entertaining, especially when the Chiefs are losing, but you guys know how it goes. Uh, but yeah, all, all seriousness, I like the signing quite a bit and only a one-year deal, so that's cool. 
The Colts signed Muhammad from the Colts. Or sorry, the Colts, not the Colts. The Bears signed former Colt Muhammad, the defensive end. Has some versatility to play on the edge and the inside. Uh, now with Matt Eberflus once again. Matt Eberflus seems to have a crush on this guy. Two years, $10 million. I believe I put him on my underrated list for free agents that I never ended up doing. Let me just check if I have him on my on that list. I want to say I might have put him on that list because I put a bunch of stats here so I can get some use out of it. Did I not put him there? No, I, maybe I didn't. I put uh, Tyquan Lewis. I think that's who I'm confusing him with. But yeah, I think he's a solid player. Let me look up just his stats and stuff. So... That's funny. He was a sixth round pick by the Saints. I actually didn't know that. Turtle probably knew that. Muhammad is coming off a breakout season with the Colts. According to Bears Wire, this is what they say. Where he set career high in tackles, sacks, and quarterback hits. I didn't know that. But yeah, he had a good season. Six sacks is pretty solid as a rotation rusher. He... He started, you know, kind of like Tyquan Lewis and him and Lewis, I believe, missed some games, but he started every game for the Colts last season. That's actually a pretty good deal for a starter from the Colts. Two years, 10, year, uh, 10 million. Muhammad joins the Bears pass rush. That includes Robert Quinn and Gibson after Khalil Mack was dealt from the Chargers for a second and a sixth round pick. They also added Justin Jones today, which is a solid, another veteran a defensive tackle. I'm not sure what's going on with Larry Ogunjobi if they're about to lose Larry Ogunjobi or whatever from the failed physical, but we'll find out. Um, so the Bears are adding to their defensive line some depth. Without Khalil Mack, they add a little bit of depth and probably have more depth than they did have a year ago. Certainly a lot to change up front because they're a totally different system from what they were before. So... I like that ad, though. Clearly knows the defense and just had his best season ever of his career. So, solid signing there for the Bears. Next, you got Quinton Jefferson. Two-year deal, $9.5 million. Signed with the Seahawks once again. I had him going to Dallas. Ends up going to the Seahawks. Familiarity, obviously. I thought Jefferson was a very underrated player last year for the Raiders. I thought he was their most disruptive interior defensive lineman. He gets a two-year, $9.5 million deal that goes up to $11 million. His old defensive line coach from when he was in Seattle before is now the defensive coordinator. So it made sense for him to go back. Um, yeah, he... Produced for the Raiders, like I said, best interior defensive lineman for the Raiders, in my opinion, a year ago. More of a pass rushing type than a run defender. And we'll add another piece to what is becoming a little bit of a deep interior defensive line with Shelby Harris and Puna Ford there in Seattle. So Quinton Jefferson adds another rotation piece to that D-line. I talked about Matt Ioannidis. Amir Abdullah signed with the Raiders. He's probably going to be there. Fourth running back on the depth chart, Josh Jacobs, Kenyon Drake, and Brandon Bolden are already there. And Brandon Bolden is good on special teams. Abdullah is also solid on special teams. He has returning experience. But I thought Abdullah, he's had his moments throughout his NFL career. He's not a guy that you want to rely on giving a ton of touches to. But he can certainly play. Like, if, if you have some injuries at that position, he can compete for some snaps throughout a game, both as a pass catcher and a runner. So... Solid fourth running back entering training camp. Not sure if he'll make the team, but he's a vet there. And then you've got Austin Hooper, who signed with the Titans. Hooper had a bit of a down season. I went over St. Brown at the beginning, bro. Let me just look up Hooper's stats. So Austin Hooper who is now 27 still. He's only 27. He's going to be 28 before the season begins. He feels like he's been in the NFL a while. He got drafted young, started his rookie season. I believe he was a first or a second round pick. 
maybe a first round pick. 2016, he was selected, played in that Super Bowl, remember, um, actually scored a touchdown in that game from what I remember. Two-time Pro Bowler in 2018 and 2019, 70 catches in 2018, 71, and 75 in 2019. His best season ever is 2019 with Atlanta, 75 catches, 787 yards, and six touchdowns, where you would probably say he was about a top 10 tight end. And the last couple of years in Cleveland hasn't been as productive, hasn't been worth necessarily the contract that he was given there. Joined that team and, and didn't play nearly the amount of snaps that I, th- I expected him to. He became kind of a part of a committee at the tight end position, along with David Njoku and Bryant and those guys. So he's still a good player, though. He can do a little bit of everything. He's got very consistent hands. He's a solid pass blocker, good athlete, not great. Um, solid route runner, and yeah, has some experience. I think he's a massive upgrade over what they had before in Tennessee, and I do like that pickup quite a bit. They let go of Julio Jones. They bring in Austin Hooper. They're going to have to find another receiver to complement A.J. Brown, but I think Austin Hooper at tight end is definitely an upgrade. Plus, he has some familiarity with uh, that offense, and I think he's going to be a nice little over-the-middle compliment to A.J. Brown and, and Ryan Tannehill and Derrick Henry and that offense. So Austin Hooper was already a part of a run-oriented, run-heavy offense with Cleveland, and it remains that way in Tennessee. Mike Vrabel adds the offense there in Tennessee. Former All-Pro kick returner Gunnar Oshevsky, or punt returner, you should say, Gunnar Olszewski is headed to the Steelers, did not resign with New England. He is in Pittsburgh. Gunnar did not have a great year last year, in my opinion. He was phenomenal, though, in 2020. He's not a receiver, so Steelers fans, he's not going to play receiver for you. He does not have that skill set, but he is a good returner. He's tough, um, and he's a little electric at times. He can break some tackles, make some moves, and, and make you pay on the return. And yeah, he's one of those feisty, just blue collar type players for sure. Um, He's got a personality too. The guy has the strangest haircut and fashion sense that I've seen from a New England Patriot. He is definitely a character. Former All-Pro though, and a decent returner signing there. Two years, $4.2 million. I talked about Jameis. You got Alex Singleton, the former CFL player. Signs with the Broncos, leading tackler for the Eagles last year and a special teams captain. So just a nice depth signing. I don't think he's going to end up starting for the Broncos, but he's a nice third or fourth linebacker who can add special teams value. Just the fact that you can get somebody as a depth piece that led a team in tackles is decent. Um, That's what I've noticed from him the most throughout his career is he's he's definitely, definitely somebody that goes and tacks the football and makes a lot of plays. You definitely notice him on the field in terms of his tackling ability and his ability to play the run more specifically. His coverage definitely leaves something to be desired. He's not exactly the most sound athlete in the world. So he's mostly like a special teams guy that's been asked to elevate his game to starting quality for the Eagles. But now if he can slide back more into a depth role, it's a solid signing. The Cowboys agreed to terms with Dante Fowler from the Falcons. Like this move. I think Dante Fowler is somebody that I feel is worth a risk. Earlier in his career, he was pretty productive with Jacksonville and with the Rams and definitely showed some ability to get to the quarterback and use some speed off the edge to do so. Never been the most sound run defender and definitely didn't have a good time in Atlanta. Definitely fell off and was not worth the contract. But he's still, he's a 94, so he's still only 27 turning uh, 28. And like the last couple of years. So he had four and a half sacks last year with Atlanta and three the year before. So he still has seven sacks over the last two years, which isn't awful, right? 2019, he had 11 and a half sacks though. And in 2017, he had eight. So he's been productive in his past for sure. So I w- he's worth taking a chance on just as a depth pass rusher because that's probably what he's going to be. He's not going to be the number one, right? You've got 
guys like Lawrence and Parsons there already to get to the quarterback. You've got Basham there already, who's pretty good. So Fowler, as like that fourth or fifth guy in line coming off the bench to get to the quarterback, is not not terrible at all and definitely worth taking a chance on he's always been better in this system as well which is going to be the the closest system that he played in since I would say Jacksonville or I guess you could call it under Dan Quinn uh he played a little bit but then they switched coaches so Jacksonville in his first two years had 12 sacks in those first two seasons eight in his second year in 2017 so yeah, I don't know. Every time, I, I don't know really what went wrong in Atlanta. I think mostly what happened this past season is he didn't really fit the system very well. And that was mostly the decision to move on from him. But I do think he's a good role player, though, at the very least. He could develop into like a re resurgence sort of player that we've seen with Dallas before. We've seen them sign guys like Alden Smith and they end up, kind of having whatever a spark or whatever uh, Robert Quinn we saw Robert Quinn do that I believe so same thing there um, James Washington is an interesting signing for Dallas they add a big framed receiver with some good vertical ability to their receiving core could be their number three receiver in Dallas this year one year deal for him Des Bryant actually reported it which was interesting but the Cowboys add James Washington to potentially take place of Cedric Wilson or at least help with that. Uh, James Washington has always had some upside. He's definitely, with that size and that speed, he's had some upside. I don't know if he's necessarily anything more than a number four receiver, but he's shown flashes throughout his career with Pittsburgh, for sure. So he's definitely worth a look on a one-year deal. So two signings today from Dallas after not making any in the previous days in free agency. And for our last piece of news here is Josh Johnson signing with Denver. His 14th different NFL franchise. Insane. Insane. So 14th different NFL franchise. He's going to be a backup there. I liked, I actually liked what I saw from Josh Johnson. I know he's had some eventful years in the past with I think he left and played in a different league and then he came back to the NFL so I actually thought he played pretty well with teams like the Jets and the Ravens last year I didn't think he was terrible at all um so he could compete for a number two quarterback spot for sure and does have some skill set where he's still fast he's still got some scrambling ability he's similar at least to Russell Wilson in some sort of way He's not Russell Wilson, obviously, but he's got the legs and the escapability to replicate Russell Wilson. So Josh Johnson as a backup, a guy with experience, a guy that's played in a hundred different systems, makes sense to add him to the team and probably is pretty cheap. I don't see the contract terms here, but probably pretty cheap. So yeah, uh, those are all the signings. I don't think I missed anything there. I think I went over everything. If you guys think I missed anything, let me know, but that's pretty much everything from today in terms of the free agency. If you guys are enjoying the video, don't forget to Gronk spike that like button and subscribe to the channel for more. I am probably the only channel out there that covers literally every single signing. So make sure you do subscribe if you are new. And if you aren't new, uh, I would advise you guys to check out uh, multiple things and links in the description. We've got so many things going on here in the BLV community. First, you could check out the Discord if you want to become a deeper member of the Discord and you want to hang out with cool guys like Connor McLeod and Turtle. Uh, you could check that out in the description. Um, also, you could head over and follow our Instagram, which we post different things like the Ultra Top 10 throughout the season. Uh, we've been posting some little TikTok and video content on there as well. And we're also on TikTok. Link is in the description. I just started that up this week for free agency. Check that out. You could also follow me on Twitter, at Mitch Milani. So I tweet a lot, by the way, especially throughout free agency. So if you have Twitter, follow me on Twitter. And you can always hit me up with a take. If you see news in the NFL and you want my opinion, the easiest way to do that honestly, is to just hit me up on Twitter and tweet at me, and I'll probably respond to you. I do with pretty much everybody, so check that out for sure. All that stuff's in the description. Um, 
Turtle says, join Discord for the draft, Nick. What's going on, guys, in the chat? I see Nick's in here. What's going on, Nick Gill? And we got Turtle in the chat. A rare Turtle appearance. Um, Nick's reevaluating the receivers from last year. Mike Larry is in the chat. What's going on? Low Bello. Life and Sports Talk with Jake says, rest in peace, John Clayton. Out of nowhere. Absolutely rest in peace, John Clayton. Absolute legend. Connor wants me to include that the Bears have former passing game coordinator and St. Brown therefore has familiarity. Yes, that's the same reason I thought that Valdez Scantling was a play, which he could still be a play, I guess. I don't think he's re-signed with the Packers yet. Kobe says, what do you think about the whole Deshaun Watson trade? Kobe, I made a 34-minute video on that already today. So if you haven't checked that out, go check that out, guys. I'm not talking about Deshaun Watson in this video just make just go check that video out. I made that a separate video on purpose so that you guys could go check that out. This is about everything else regarding free agency today. That video, that subject it deserved its own video for sure. And I went in depth on that. I probably went deeper on that than most other people out there. That's a really in-depth video. I took notes for it and everything. So I went over every single possible thing that happened with that. So go check that out. Who goes first overall in the draft? I'm thinking, I guess it's Hutchinson. I, I don't necessarily know, um, but I, I believe it will be Hutchinson or a defensive end of some sort. Um, Christian Watson. I don't know what you guys are talking about in here. Michael says, crazy free agency, let's go. Edgar says, sup, Mitch? What's up, Edgar? How you doing, man? Crazy free agency. It's been an insane free agency. Insane. Ridiculous. The real March Madness. The real March Madness. NFL free agency. Who's next for the Chiefs? They got to address the interior defensive line, man. Titus. It's bad, bro. It's bad. Look at that interior defensive line outside of Chris Jones. They got nothing. Nada. They got to bring in a big, big, you know what? And they could use, yeah, just defense, I would say. Their offense is good now. They're done on offense. Good to go. Will the Cowboys please impress me for once? Caesar, they signed two people today. What are you talking about? Machete. I'm sure you could look that up on Google. If that's really want, what you want to know, if you want the draft order, you could check that out on Google. Connor says the Jags are at number one. Being helpful. You're not supposed to be all this helpful, Connor. Uh, Titus says, besides Melvin, yeah, you're right. Melvin Ingram, did he resign? I don't think he resigned yet. JG says, what do you think the Browns realistically can get for Baker? If a team like Seattle is interested, could we expect a player or a pick or both? Uh, so JG, also known as Jimmy Garoppolo, um, I read Josina Anderson reported that it's a second or a third round pick for Baker Mayfield my guess would be second round pick or two-thirds sort of thing similar to Carson Wentz because Carson Wentz was two-thirds so I would think Baker goes for about the same but there are limited options at this point Carson Wentz there was more options there was more teams that probably could have traded for him All right. I think I'm done though. Went over all the signings. Appreciate all the great questions. Appreciate everybody here live. Final question from Nicholas Gill. If Watson gets suspended, should the Browns keep Baker for the first half of the season? My answer would be, if Baker Mayfield wants to play for you for half the season, then sure. I don't hate that at all. 
but I highly doubt Baker Mayfield wants to actually play for the Browns. And that's the problem. So I think Baker Mayfield wants to get traded. Bad ask. Another question. What's up, Mitch? Another former Patriots player went to the Buccaneers. You're talking about Logan Ryan, I assume? Yes. Yes, sir. Tom Brady's recruiting. He's playing GM. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. It's Mitch. Appreciate everybody. Have a great weekend. I'll definitely be putting out content tomorrow and Sunday. So make sure that you check it out. Peace.